each year because I'm entered in quite a few classes. Normally I'm only entered in one or two, but this year I've actually been lucky enough to manage to get into four classes. Maybe more about that later on and uh, explain how that's happened. But yeah, it's a first for me and I love it. It's been really good, lots of flying and uh, lots of fun, which is what I come here for and to help obviously Horizon customers. But it's been pretty stressful. It's been uh, back and forth. I'm calling for about four or five other competitive pilots as well. So uh, it's a little bit hectic. So sorry for leaving the live until later on in the week. To be fair, this is the Friday and Saturday and Sunday are the main event days for Top Gun. All of the classes merged together. The earlier days, uh, Wednesday we started, are the Pro-Am, Pro-Sport, uh, the EDF, the new EDF class gets started. But yeah, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, all of those classes also fly around, um, but you have the, the big guns come in team and unlimited and expert and master classes. So that would, uh, that's my excuse for leaving the live until later on in the week. So um, yeah, I'm gonna stick to it. Um, as for now, we're actually done for the day flying, but don't worry, um, it's actually a, a benefit because the, the noise will be less and it gives me this time to go and do a walk around. Um, I'm going to walk up and down the flight line, have a look at some of the aircraft that are on the ground. There, you'll hear there's probably aircraft flying in the background. That will be people either practice flying or test flying um, their aircraft because they're turning up for the later classes. So, the airspace, commentator's still here, Sam Wright, the, uh, the voice of RC. He's, um, as you can hear in the background, telling the pilots that we have open sky for at least another hour or, no, oh, geez, probably two and a half hours. So, yeah, there's lots of time. So, going to take this time, walk around, show you some of the gorgeous airplanes that are here, maybe take a closer look. Um, I'll try and answer your questions as I go. Please excuse me, I'm not mic'd up, so if the audio isn't wonderful, um, please shoot a message in the bottom and um, I'll try and speak up. Uh, sorry about the accent if some of you aren't understanding, but it's the, it's the one I'm stuck with, I'm afraid. It's my, my best central Illinois accent. So um, yeah, bear with me. And if there are any questions, if you'd like me to look at anything specific, please shoot them in the bottom. I only seem to be getting two messages up on the screen visible any one time. So if I do miss them, please excuse me. I will try and get to them um, like to look at um, and type some sort of response later on when I'm back at the hotel. So enough about me. Let's get uh, well, enough of visual about me. Let's get spun round and this is where we're at. This is uh, Horizon HQ for the event. This is the HH tent. Myself and Mike Cabrera, a team pilot, are um, sharing it. We have Ray Gonzalez, another team pilot next to us. Very fortunate um, to have this space, especially it's been pretty warm, a lot warmer than I was expecting. And uh, yeah, it's nice to have shade and the pit area there to charge and work on stuff. Amazingly enough, I'm probably gonna jinx it now, but this has been the least stressful event for me as far as working on airplanes, wrenching as we call it. So um, yeah, it's been a, a real joy to just get on and flying. Uh, aircraft outside the tent is a little new thing from uh, Hangar 9. Maybe some more about that later if anyone's interested, but uh, right now let's talk about some of the other cool airplanes. I'm gonna walk up. I can't remember, I don't know whether it's northeast, south or west, but I'm going to walk up this end of the flight line, which we're actually at. There's um, not much beyond us um, other than the huge DreamWorks trailer. This is the DreamWorks RC who are based down in Florida, a very jet specialist radio control supplier. Basically, if these guys don't have what you need for your jet project, then you're probably in trouble. They, uh, they attend a lot of shows around the US and have saved me on a number of times, being able to go up, buy some glue, buy some parts um, that's needed to. So yeah, they've helped out a lot. So this is, let's call it the North End. I'm probably wrong, but this is the North End, as I know it, of the flight line, looking all the way down. There are probably around about 35, 40 tents here, all full up of models. So um, yeah, hopefully my internet connection stays, hopefully the Osmo stays charged and my phone stays charged and the audio works all the way through and I don't bore you to death. If I do, please let me know. I'm sure you will, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll walk down until we, we can't anymore. One of the people I'm calling for, Jose Mendes here with uh, his daughter. That's uh, a BVM F86. I have the, the pleasure of being his caller. It's been really cool. Thanks, Chris. I knew you'd know West End. So we're gonna go west to east. Well, I don't know. Um, but yeah, Jose's been doing really, really well. His scores are creeping up. So 
um, they actually post the round scores as we go along, which is cool. So um, yeah, a lot of the pilots, me included, we're very anxious at the end of every day looking at the scoreboard. In fact, today's round has gone up, so we may be looking at the scoreboard a bit later on. So, but yeah, Spacewalker, Stuka, P-47, PT-19, this sort of sums up what Top Gun's about. There's no specific aeroplane um, type. As long as it's scale, as long as it's competition worthy, then it gets to fly. So it's one of the really cool things about TG. You'll, you'll be in the air flying a jet along with a Sopwith Pup or a, a J3 Cub or a Space Walker as we have in front of us. So yeah, it's a um, pretty interesting event in that sense. There's a non-competition model right there, which is the glider, um, the turbine-powered glider. This is actually one of my aircraft I bought along to do the noontime demos, hoping we can get this live and the mic thing sorted out uh, today as a test run for tomorrow and get you a live or get us a live during the noontime demo, demo tomorrow, which is um, a nice break. You get to see some of the scale stuff, but you also get to see some of the air show pilots who bring their amazing airplanes to display for us. So yeah, another one of my aircraft. This is a F-86 Sabre, uh, third scale. So I'm competing in ProJet, um, which is a class, pretty much a flying only class. There's no specific static judging on the pro jet class or pro prop or um, sport prop. It's, it's all about the flying. So yeah, super enjoying that class because it's, um, yeah, it's flying based, it's flying orientated. I can't be uh, judged for my building, which is lucky because I didn't build this particular airplane. This was uh, from a friend of mine, Rich Muller, up in Canada. Canada. He uh, is a professional model builder, so he built this airplane to order, as it were. I got the kit from Germany some years ago, and uh, Rich took about a year to assemble it and uh, present it to me in what we call a turnkey configuration. Self-explanatory, really, so. There's my particularly favorite toy of the whole event. I'm uh, very, very biased, but that's the all-new Hangar 9 um, OV-10 Bronco and uh, it's a project I've been working on for two years. We uh, bucked the trend, bucked the system a little bit and released it here before its official release. Excuse me, the turbine goes past, very loud turbine. Yo, sorry, didn't release it. We showed it here before its official release in December. So yeah, more about that later. I may do a separate walk around the OV when I get it out in the sun and um, yeah, go over some details because I've been getting a lot of questions about it and the spec and what's inside and so forth so yeah more on that later ray gonzalez is 10 there's a, a huge viper jet that's uh, mike abrera our team guys uh, ride for the event it's a super big plug, plug and play again third scale jet global jet club out in california sell that sport jet i know i said it was a scale event but this is here for the demos young adrian has uh, been put on a great display earlier on today with that scoreboard over there sorry about the, the switch round so i think round four is up let's have a look so we have sport prop there sport jet expert jet pro jet and pro prop so yeah they're all posted up and uh, we'll study more of those later on fingers crossed we've been doing pretty well as a team so i'm happy made most happy about the uh, E-Flight SU-30 and the OV-10, both work aeroplanes, but they're, they're, they're doing really, really well. So yeah, there's my SU-30, E-Flight SU-30 back there in the tent. I've run out of space in mine, so I've uh, borrowed a bit of um, Ray's real estate. So check this out. This is, if I had to say it, the coolest aeroplane in the event. Henry Castellano's um, 787 Dreamliner. It's huge, it's gotta be, well, 14 feet, all composite, beautiful. I mean, check these things out. That looks like an exact scale working turbofan, right? No, behind that is a standard model turbine. This is a 3D printed turbofan, but watch. It spins. And it spins on startup, which is super cool. So when uh, Henry initiates the start, it, um, they're, they're static and then the suction from the engine actually keep, gets them rotating. So it's uh, yeah, just one of the many cool features of this stunning, stunning aeroplane. Um, I was uh, lucky enough to help Henry with the setup of this on our first day here, um, Tuesday, I believe. We got to fly on Wednesday. I lost count or track. But um, yeah, Henry was setting up the gyro on this particular aeroplane and wow. Um, 
there is one aeroplane that I would like to get footage of of it flying in a competition round. This is one of them. There are many, but this is definitely the one. It's super beautiful in the air and uh, presents really, really well. And he also brought with him a huge Skymaster SU-30, an aeroplane that I know pretty well. This has two 200 pound, uh, 200 size turbines in it. Weighs probably in the region of about 80, 85 pounds. So um, yeah, sort of the pinnacle of the jet end of the hobby. It's really, really beautiful thrust vectoring on the uh, nozzles. We're going to have a look at those, show you some of that stuff. Let me check this out. It's just like the real aeroplane. Those nozzles actually move and can direct the aeroplane in flight. So yeah, it can do some amazing flips and sort of hover it, which is cool. So yeah. This is a good aeroplane to have a look around because you can show some of the detail off on the big aeroplanes, all the rivets, all the panel lines. And this is, I've got to say, this is pretty much industry standard now. You'll see 99% of the aeroplanes will be finished to this level. And um, yeah, it's what we come to expect of the, 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 the premium jet event or the premium scale event in the world. So this is about average. Another aircraft I've been involved with helping this weekend or this week has been this huge um, Dauntless from Mike Fedico, Warbirds West out from California. They made the long trip. Mike has a uh, particular affinity and an association with the Pearl Harbor Museum out in Hawaii. He goes out there every year to put on a display, a reenactment and um, an air display. And because of that, Mike specializes in the uh, Pacific uh, aircraft, the Pacific era, specific specific pacific specific type aircraft and this dauntless is one of them he uh, he's also has a giant scale avenger in the, the hangar behind me or the tent behind me and um, which is also a work of art and he just took delivery of that so it's not quite ready to fly but the dauntless actually made its maiden flight here after the event one evening i think it was tuesday and uh, he was straight into round one the next day with a, a major achievement considering how big and complicated and beautiful an airplane this is so yeah mike's a pretty fearless pilot i don't think i would have um, had the bravery to have done that but he did and it's worked out really well i'm pretty sure no, in fact i know he's leading his class but here's a really cool feature on this particular airplane look at these dive brakes so hinge top and bottom flaps exactly like the real aeroplane so they would open up when the aeroplane does its dive bombing run and uh, create more drag and slow it down stop it from exceeding a speed where it would break up and uh, Henry from California has mimicked those perfectly he's the the builder the finisher of this particular aircraft another one of those professional builders who actually get to do this job every day for a living and um, yeah to me they're craftsmen to be able to turn out something like this again and again and again is uh, an incredible talent so yeah hope mike doesn't mind i'm leaving his uh, dive brakes i should put them down actually hold on i feel bad if anything were to happen so i'll tuck those away so we have proof i left it how i found it t33 another jet big fokker d7 oh i know i said there wasn't much flying to be seen but wow what a plane that's a giant half-scale Booker Jungmeister, 400cc Moki uh, four-stroke radial engine. I think I might just break up my walk a little bit and go out onto the uh, flight line, see if we can get some footage of this particular app. I'm not sure what class it's competing in, but oh my gosh, the sound is amazing. Unfortunately, my phone is not doing this any justice, I'm sure, but this airplane is huge and sounds incredible as well. It's the first time I've seen this airplane fly at this event, so I imagine this is a shakedown flight, as we call it, a trim flight. I'm sure it's flown before. In fact, I know it has flown before, but um, yeah, it's quite common for pilots to have a shakedown flight, make sure everything's okay, that the airplane's traveled well, no hangar rash or trailer rash, as we call it. So um, yeah, not much to see there, unfortunately. We've got an albatross coming into land. Nice. Very well done, considering we're flying in a pretty much exact crosswind, you can see by the windsock. So to uh, land a World War I type, a lightly loaded thing like that, without uh, rubbing a wing, takes to do. 
Oh, I hope that sound came out for you guys. I really do. It's so cool. Five cylinders, four stroke, 400 cc displacement. It's a, it's a joy to behold and um, nicely flown as well. It's just flying at a scale speed, which is what we're looking for. One of the many um, particular categories the judges are marking us on is realism. And uh, one of the cat many categories I've seen flown not so well is the speed. It's very easy to fly a model much faster than the full size would fly. So, yeah, to see this booker being flown at these speeds, not sharp. Yeah, that's cool. I'm sorry. I know I'm biased, but that is cool. Yeah, do we see that uh, young man? Jungmeister, sorry, I always get the two mixed up, which is weird because they're some of my favorite planes. Um, yeah, to see, see it being flown at a scale speed is uh, very nice, to say the least. Perfect timing. I wish I, I couldn't have timed this any better. Remember we spoke about my Fedeco's um, Dauntless? Well, this is Mike's, um, how can I say, star of the show uh, event airplane. This is a brand new third scale P40. And um, yeah, once again, commissioned by Mike, built by Henry, this thing. I know my camera will not do this plane justice. It is what I'd call a museum piece. I well shit the, the term work of art, but if a model could ever be classed as a work of art, this is probably it. So yeah, it's beautiful. Really, really beautiful. Just shy of 80 pounds. I think it's about 120 inch wingspan. Has a Colm 230 inline four stroke. Built in hand built in Austria, really like the pinnacle of uh, model airplane engines. So, this thing is uh, stunning, stunning. This is entered in unlimited class and will be flown by David Schulman, built by Henry, owned by Mike. So, it's the epitome of a team effort. Everyone's involved in this. What they're doing now is they're putting it on the static table. <laughs> they're putting it on the static table. The panel of judges you see sitting down there are actually going to mark it. Using the information, the documentation presented by the team, they're going to uh, mark it to see how accurate it is. And um, yeah, for me, it's probably the most nerve wracking part of the whole event because it's when I put an airplane on the static table, there's not much I can do about it. It's there. It's and uh, you're being critiqued. You start with a hundred, everything, all the judges will say, right, this is perfect. We just have to find the faults. And um, yeah, it's, it's really quite stressful. When Henry gives the size to the airplane, you can see how big it is. It's a, it's a beast. It's quickly going to walk in front. Oh, I'm checking to make sure I'm not blocking the judge's view. That would be a faux pas on my behalf, but they're good. They're still being talked through the documentation by Mike and David. Look at that, the craftsman at work, making sure everything's all straight, all good. I will leave these guys to it and carry on my walk, but yeah, I think if there was any one plane here that if I could have it, own it, play with it myself, this would be the one. It's stunning, really, really stunning. I'm actually very excited to see it fly. It's one of the few planes that I will stop what I'm doing, um, no matter what it is, when it goes to fly to see it. And it's going to sound really cool as well. That's three individual four-stroke cylinders in a line. That quick swear. Oh no, they're, they're judging, so I won't get in the way. But yeah, three individual four-stroke cylinders in a line, beautifully machined CNC aluminium perfection, and uh, it sounds that way. Uh, a lot of people will say the radials are the coolest sounding um, engines in, on the marketplace. To me, it's the inline, twi uh, inline twins, inline threes uh, of Colm. They, they, they're just an exhaust note for me that really sort of epitomizes the high end of the hobby. Imperial RC Club, Yeah, these are the guys that sort of make this event happen. Without them, we wouldn't have an event. It sounds crazy, but the guys in the yellow shirts, these are the workers, the, the worker ants or the worker bees. Sorry, just shutting that whilst the uh, young mice says, don't, don't crash it, don't crash it, don't crash it. Oh, that's gonna break. Oh, he just looks like he's tweaked the undercarriage. Yeah. That was unfortunately uh, quite a lot of descent not arrested with power early enough, but it looks like he got away with it. Looks like it's coming back. It's 
semi-serviceable. So yeah, back to the Imperial RC guys, guys in the yellow shirts, which there aren't many out now because we're doing the free flying. So it's sort of down to the individual pilots, but they're the guys that make the pit lane work, make the flight line work. They organize, they shuffle, they, they marshal the, the walking areas here, keep all the public safe and, and keep uh, the, the flying area clear. So yeah, I have to say a big shout out to anyone that can stand out in a field for a week unpaid and uh, deal with a bunch of um, hobbyists playing with toy aeroplanes, I take my hat off to them. It's a thankless job and they do it very, very well. So. Yeah, um, coming to the last third of the, uh, the, the tents, I have a beautiful King Air in the back there by um, Mike Barbie. That's one of the uh, models in the team class I believe I'll be competing against. John Bokoy, another team member with his T-34. Really nice aeroplane. It's got some inertia to it, which is the polite way of saying it's heavy, but it actually flies better for it. It's one of those few aeroplanes that fly better for the weight and um, John puts on a really nice display. So yeah, it's chill out mode now at the moment. It's really weird watching, walking down the flight line now and seeing the difference in mood and stress level because we've finished flying for the day. Everyone's chilled and sitting back. But if I was to do this in the morning when people have got to go for static judging or their round is up or if somebody throws an attempt and the order changes, yeah, it's um, certainly a different mood. So yeah, there's a lovely Hellcat. I always get my cats mixed up. That is a Hellcat from Tim Len. Tim, it's a funny situation here is that Tim is actually stood over there. He's one of our Top Gun judges. So maybe for a bit of a change, instead of hearing me drone on, we're going to have a word with Tim. Tim, you're on Horizon Hobby Live. Thank you very much um, for giving us a moment of your time, if you don't mind. I wanted to chat to you about being a judge, um, something I've never done. I've stood in front of a bunch of them at scale events, and I think this is your first time, right? Once again, if you have an RV and you need to change pump, uh, Andy has arranged for a pump truck. Uh, give Andy a call so he can get you uh, scheduled in. I don't know if the truck will be here in that long, but uh, if you can call Andy. Cool. You need to get your RV to meet up. I think the consistency there is now where it needs to be, and I think I think the judges doing good, doing, doing real well. And I think the score is going to reflect that, and there's going to be some you know happy people. When you're judging a flight, maybe just give us a brief overview of what you're looking for yeah, as judges. Yeah, what we tend to be looking for is anytime you're. Let's talk about a couple maneuvers, not to make a long story short. On our takeoff roll, obviously you will be on. Uh, Center line of the runway, you take off, part of the meter, and then you see, if you, you know, rotate nice and smooth, you're looking runway center line, you're looking at your gear coming up, you're looking, looking at you flying runway heading as that gear comes up, and then call the maneuver before you make your turn. That's, the, that's a precision of the takeoff. So it's as much about the presentation yes. than the actual flying itself, so. Yeah. Okay, cool, wonderful. Thank you, Tim. You Sorry if the audio came out really low on that one. I saw the messages coming in. I really appreciate that. Like I say, I'm on a phone at the moment without a separate audio. So what I may do tomorrow is uh, during the live tomorrow, go and have a word with Tim again, because what he had to say for me was really interesting because you get to see the other side, the, the, the guys in the chair, what they have to do. So, and Tim's great at explaining what's involved. And it, even in that short, brief moment that I chatted to him, I learned something there. So yeah, we may revisit that interview, but thank you again to all those that gave me a message that the audio wasn't great. And if my audio is not great, please tell me. Again, other end of the spectrum, we've done the jets, we've done the radio warbirds. Look at this lovely, lovely crop duster. I think it's an ag cat. I'm not, uh, no, thrush commander, sorry. And um, yeah, radial thrush commander. How beautiful is this? We'll get some close up detail shots, hopefully showing you what goes in not sure what class this is competing in hopefully not one of mine because it's uh, absolutely stunning it's funny it still smells of fresh paint so i think the uh, <laughs> i'm glad i had the camera spun around this way because i'm here sniffing the horizontal stabilizer looking uh, very very odd indeed but yeah it looks like and smells like it's had some paint work recently so i don't know whether it's a new plane if it is even more props to the builder to making it look so old and weathered but um, yeah, 
hopefully my camera is showing up the, um, the dust and the dirt and the, the oil basically that has been simulated and um, presented on this airplane. It's, yeah, superb. I know I keep using that word, I'm sorry, but yeah, I, I'm running out of um, superlatives to, to, to describe some of these airplanes because I, I know what goes into building and uh, finishing something to this caliber um, only because I've been around other people that do it I haven't got the skill set on the building front to build to this level and uh, but watching those that do it and seeing how much time it takes it's uh, very inspiring and um, yeah impressive so onwards and outwards another crop duster one of my favorite crop dusters a uh, looks like a air tractor 502 this one's really cool because um, it's a turboprop based on a turboprop full scale. Now, turboprops are super cool, but they don't make super cool models generally because of the long skinny nose. How do we fit an engine inside that nose without it sticking out, which obviously we can't do for a scale competition. This one has an electric motor, E-Flight Power 160, I believe, um, if it's the same airplane that was here last year. If it is, I mean, it's impressive as it stands, but even more impressive is if it's the same airplane, because I remember if, um, last year being very, very saddened to watch this airplane have a uh, encounter with the trees over on the far west end. So if it's the same airplane, wow, yeah, it's cool to see it back here repaired and looking resplendent and ready to compete. Because to me, this is, yeah, this looks really, really good. I can't obviously see the documentation, but yeah, it's from what I'm seeing right here, unless the documentation lets it down, it's gonna be scoring very, very well in static. Look at that. Cool. Big Corsair, I saw somebody mention Corsair. I'm not a big fan of Corsairs personally. Um, I think it's the blue that gets me, but this is a uh, particularly cool one, a Dash 5, so it's got a interesting different cowling intakes different cowling shape. This is an old aeroplane. This was actually built in England um, some years ago by a chap called Graham Buchanan. When I was living in England, I remember Graham building it and this seemed like the biggest, most monstrous plane in the world uh, at the time. And now, fast forward 10 years, it's, a, it's an average size warbird. So yeah, it's cool to see it still alive. Um, Barry out in Texas owns it. He, it's great to see him, he's not a hangar queen. He flies it and flies it a lot, so. Yeah. More war, war birds. This is we're coming into Warbird Alley. This is the uh, east end, the opposite to the west end, or the other end to the west end. Whether I'm going east, south, north, or west, I don't know. But it's the opposite end to us, and this is where the majority of the warbirds live. Warbird Alley is a congregation of uh, like-minded modellers who um, get together in the evenings. They have uh, a, a very social part of their Top Gun event and um, you see them hanging out in their tent over there and uh, quite often cooking and um, having fun which is super nice. It's part of any RC event but it's nice to see it still incorporated into a competition because it goes to show that it's not just all about being competitive. RC Informer, Rich is here, a very very famous YouTube influencer and um, yeah he's here competing in the foam category I'm sure flying in the demos tomorrow. He's got our new E-Flight V1200 here. Um, he's done a bunch of videos I've seen on lots and lots of uh, foam aircraft, but I've just recently watched his videos on our super fast V1200. So if you get time, RC Informer is a site worth visiting. And um, yeah, lots of information, unboxings, guides, hints and tips on how to improve, not just how to fly, but I like Rich's stuff. He has, he's mic'd up as he flies, so he's talking whilst he flies. So um, yeah, it's uh, one of those video channels I can thoroughly recommend. So yeah, that was the flight line walk. It's um, unfortunately reduced. I will, you know, I won't lie. We're, we're probably about 30, 40% down on what we normally have in, in terms of Steve Thomas, in terms of attendance and models and so forth. But um, it's still amazing and not taken for granted and a privilege to be here and lovely to see people getting to enjoy their aircraft that they've spent months years years and years working on building developing um, getting a chance to enjoy them and competition aside 
it's still all enjoyable. I mean, we're here because we enjoy it, we have fun. There's no massive top prize. It's not a life-changing trophy that uh, will, will make things different. Um, it's just for the fun of it. We're, we're all hobbyists, no matter how big our aircraft, no matter how small our aircraft, how expensive, how cheap. So yeah, to be able to enjoy them out at an event together, I um, thank the organizers of Top Gun, Frank Tiano especially. He is the, the man behind it. And um, yeah, hopefully it carries on for many more years. We will um, do the same sort of live tomorrow. Hopefully I will try and fit it in before the noontime demo. So it can spill over to the noontime demo. I may have to get somebody to hold the camera and talk, um, which might come as a relief to some of you. But um, yeah, I'll try. I know I've done my static judging for my last class that I'm entered in. I think I have one more round to fly for each one of the classes which I'm competing in, which is Pro Jet, Pro Prop and the EDF class. And then I have to start competing in the team class with my ME262 tomorrow. So hopefully I'll get time to do the live. If not, um, I apologize in advance. And thank you very much for taking the time to join us, to watch us, to comment. So, um, yeah, give us feedback. Thanks a lot. Bye.